So today we are going to continue from right over there. Today we are going to finish up with our variables. We are going to start off with our data types in Python that is int, float, bool, strings. So this is all that we will be doing today. We will try to make sure that we are able to complete it up. Okay. Uh, hi sir, I am not attend uh, yesterday lecture, but I want certificate and I am continuing lectures from today. Also, I watched yesterday's lecture. Sarthak, if you have so for the very first day of our boot camp, we usually accept the attendance for that particular class till the end of the boot camp as well. Okay, so but from today only those students who are coming to the class live and today I will be just randomly at any point of time just telling you okay this is where the attendance link is. I will show you the attendance link for just like 5 seconds. I have already told you you guys have to note down the time at which I have told you guys the attendance you have to come back right over there. You have to complete the entire thing up okay so uh, please make sure that uh, you guys are able to focus upon the class if you are missing on the attendance there is nothing that can be done from our end so please if you guys want the uh, certificates you will have to fill up the attendance live okay Are we going to learn Python in the first few classes? Yes. The first three classes, that is the first day, second day and the third day, we will be focusing upon uh, Python. So do you work at Infosys? No, this is the Devtowns t-shirt. So if you guys want to see it, it is Devtowns t-shirt itself. Okay, so like I said, uh, we will be having the classes of Python for the first three days. Then we'll be starting off with NumPy. Then we'll be going towards uh, Pandas. After we have completed all that, we will be studying about the machine learning, machine learning algorithms, uh, all these kind of stuff. And once we have completed it, once we have completed the entire thing, then we'll be moving uh, further with the project. Okay, so as simple as that. Are you guys able to understand that? Please do let me know. Are you an engineer uh, yourself? Okay, so I think so. I had introduced myself yesterday, but I uh, think many of you must have not uh, like heard it. So I will just introduce myself once again. Okay, so my name is Shaurasana. I am right now the co-founder at DevTown. Uh, along with Ashish Modi, he's also one of the founders. I have previously worked in companies such as Reliance, Geo, Fastnel, Google and other startups as well. I've worked as a data analyst, a data scientist, a full stack engineer, machine learning engineer, a software engineer previously. I've also been a part of Google where I used to go on behalf of Google via the Explore ML program to various colleges across India where I had to teach uh, topics like data science, machine learning, AI, full stack web development, Android development to various students at different universities uh, on behalf of Google. So that is a brief introduction about me. Okay. I hope that that would be more than sufficient for you guys. Okay. Uh, okay. So can we start with our today's class guys? Please do let me know. Can we start with our today's class guys? Please do let me know. Uh, so Samriddhi, if you are going on my LinkedIn account, I have, I think so, updated my LinkedIn as well. The link to my LinkedIn account is down in the description of the video itself. I think so, I posted all these things on uh, LinkedIn. So let me just see my profile. Yeah, so I think so I have to update it, but uh, yeah, most of the stuff I have posted it out on uh, LinkedIn as well. So that is my LinkedIn. If you guys want to connect with me, it will be great. The link for that is also there in the description itself. Okay, so let us uh, start with our today's class, guys. We'll be continuing from where we had left yesterday. I'll be providing you guys the link to the notes once again because I know 90% of you will be asking me the exact same question that, sir, where is the notes of this particular class? So I will just pin it up in the live chat right over here. So the notes of this particular class is uh, on like the live chat as you are able to see. Okay, we have pinned it up right over there. So you can uh, like get the link for the notes from right over here itself. Okay, uh, it's my first day. Can you tell me how to fill the attendance form? Kiran, I think so. You should uh, have visited the first day of the class before coming to this particular class. We cannot waste our time on that. So let's get started. Okay, so yesterday we had seen up till here 
the next particular topic that we are going to deal is with multiple assignment operator it is a very important uh, topic okay that you should be learning about and this is something that we will be later on recapping when we'll be learning about tuples as well so this is a very important thing and this will also show you why people prefer to code in python okay one of the best advantages of a language like python is that it is very easy to understand the learning curve is not that much anybody can learn python at any point of time and the it helps us to concise our code so the same thing that you want to do that you will take like 10 lines or 15 lines to do it in c plus plus or python the exact same thing you can do it in python uh, c plus or java the exact same thing you can do it in python in just like three or four lines of code itself so it helps you to make your code very concise okay it helps you to shorten your code a lot okay there's not a lot to type in python one of the greatest examples of this is the multiple assignment operator okay multiple assignment operator so right over here as you are able to see we are having height is equals to three length is equals to sixth and width is equals to two so we have created three different uh, like variables as you are able to see named as height length and width we have assigned some values to them okay so height is three length is six width is two and we are calculating uh, the volume okay we are calculating the volume as volume is equals to height into length into width okay so i will just uh, once again i'm just going to cl clarify this particular topic for those who have missed the day one attendance okay for those people who have missed the day one attendance i'm not going to repeat it please do not disturb the live chat okay it is here for questions that what students are not able to understand for attendance purpose those who have missed day one's attendance it is still open we haven't closed it yet okay so you can still after this class go back watch the video fill up the attendance for yesterday's class itself okay but that is just for day one every single day that is from day two to day seven you will have to come to the class live you will have to fill up the attendance form live itself okay according to what i have told to you guys the attendance form will be accepting responses up till 30 minutes after the end of the class after that even if you're filling up the form that attendance is not counted except for day one okay because i understand many of you must have left the uh, attendance itself that is why i'm reminding you guys you can still fill up the attendance form for day one and then you will be able to get these certificates okay so i have already told you this i'm not going to repeat it do not ask any bullshit questions after this let's focus upon the studies okay so uh, volume is equals to height into length into width as you are able to see right over here okay so we are calculating 3 into 6 into 2 that is 36 so as soon as i'm printing volume you are able to see that we are getting 36 printed out okay we are getting 36 printed out right over here are you guys able to understand this uh, please do let me know Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. Great. So now this exact same thing where we had assigned three different values to three different variables itself can be done in a single line of code as well. It can be done in a single line of code as well. So right over here, as you are able to see, we are having height, comma, length, comma, width is equal to three, comma, six, comma, two. Okay. So instead of writing so the this is the exact same thing okay instead of writing it in three separate lines what i'm doing is g i g s t height comma like d t h width comma uh, sorry length comma width sorry length and g t h length comma width is equals to 3 comma 6 comma 2 okay this is the exact same thing okay this is the exact same thing we are having height 3 6 and 2 okay the exact same thing we have done down below as well so we are having the height so 3 will be assigned 3 as a value will be assigned to height okay uh, 6 as a value will be assigned to length and 2 as a value will be assigned to width okay are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys these both the lines have the exact same uh, like answer okay as the exact same utilization itself are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys.
Are you guys able to understand? Please do let me know. Great. So as you're able to see this exact same thing, we can write it down in just three lines of code and we are getting the exact same answer that is 36. Okay, we are getting the exact same answer that is 36 right over here. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. Amazing, amazing, amazing guys. So this is called as multiple assignment operator. Okay, this is called as multiple assignment operator right over here. Uh, the next particular thing that we need to know about right now we have learned about variables we have learned about multiple assignment operator as well but there are some rules that come into place when you are naming a variable okay when you are naming a variable itself now these rules are something that you should be familiarizing yourself with now there are two things in a particular world okay one is a particular rule okay the two things okay rules and conventions now most of you might not be able to understand the difference between the two so first i'm explaining the difference okay rules and conventions now uh many of you might be knowing the difference between the two what is the rule and what is the convention what is the difference between the two but let me like make you guys understand about it as well okay so rules is basically something that you can get punished for okay if you're breaking a rule for example killing a person Okay, killing a person is a particular rule. Okay, you cannot kill a person. If you are killing a person in that particular way, you will end up going to jail. Okay, if you are breaking a rule, okay, if you are breaking a rule, then you go to jail. Okay, that is how rules work. Okay, rules have some binding problem statements that are there. Okay, so if you break that rule, then you are going to jail. Okay, whereas convention. Okay, so humans eat uh, with their hands. Okay, this is a convention. Humans eat with hand. Now, if you take a plate full of rice, put your mouth inside of that particular plate eat itself and start uh, eating like a dog okay you are not going to go to jail okay nobody is going to send you to jail itself okay the convention is that humans use fork and uh, spoon or maybe like their fingers to eat but even if you are eating directly in their mouth as well okay even if you want to like just place your entire face into the entire bowl and start eating like a dog okay you are not going to get it thrown into jail though the only thing that people will say about you is that he is not a human being he is an animal okay that is the only thing that the people will be saying about you that you are an animal okay you are not a human being okay so that is the difference between a rule and a convention okay if you are breaking a rule you will get punished for it but if you are breaking a convention people will just think that you are a shitty like developer or something like that okay so let's uh like try to understand okay uh let's try to understand about this there is uh that would be very easy as well i don't think so uh you will be facing any problems are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know we will be looking at like uh, rules and conventions from a perspective of code as well you don't have to worry about it so right over here first we are going to learn about some of the rules that are there okay first we are going to learn about some of the rules that are there so there are these five to six rules that you need to be familiarizing yourself while naming a variable the rule one states that you should start a variable name with an alphabet or an underscore so let me just uh, like concise the first uh, four points for you okay so that you are able to understand the first four rules that are there i will just uh, show you an example so that you are able to understand that okay uh, for example you are having the variable name as rent okay rent is your variable name r e n t that is your variable name i will be dividing this into two parts that is the first letter that is the first part and the rest of the word okay and the rest of the word that is there okay so i'm dividing every single variable name that exists that you can keep into two separate parts the first is the first letter that is the initial letter of the variable name and the second half is basically the rest of the variable name itself okay so let us try to understand that let us try to understand that so your first letter of the variable name okay that can be small a to small z okay capital a to capital z or an underscore okay or an underscore 
okay not a hyphen and underscore these are the only three possibilities okay these are the only three possibilities that can be there you cannot have anything else except this small a to small z capital a to capital z and an underscore okay these are the only three things that you can keep as the first letter of your variable name okay first letter of your variable name secondly for the rest of the variable name itself for the rest of the part of the variable name okay you can have small a to small z you can have capital a to capital z you can have underscore as well as well as you can have numbers 0 to 9 okay you can have numbers as well that is 0 to 9 okay so the first letter you cannot have it as numbers but the rest of the name or the rest of the uh <clears throat> variable name can contain numbers as well are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know uh, madhavan you will be able to find the notes as the link that has been pinned in the live chat okay there's a link that i have pinned in the live chat you will be able to find the notes right over there okay guys okay so you cannot contain so anywhere inside the entire name of the variable you cannot contain special characters like and percent hash hyphen or like brackets or like exclamation mark or dollar mark percentage mark all these special characters you cannot have it anywhere inside of your variable name you cannot have special characters in your variable name okay so these are the first four rules that are there related to naming a variable first rule the first letter of the variable can not contain any numbers the first letter of a variable cannot contain any numbers okay the rest of the name of the variables can contain numbers underscore small a to z capital a to z but they cannot contain special characters anywhere okay they cannot contain special character anywhere okay the next particular part that is there the next particular rule is that variable names are case sensitive uh, python itself is a case sensitive language guys so if you are writing small str or capital str or capital s small t capital r or capital s capital t small r all these will be contained as separate or different okay different variable names okay all these will be considered as different variables names okay why is that the case guys because python is a case sensitive language okay python is a case sensitive language guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know For all those asking about attendance, I have already told you guys how the attendance will be taken up. If you haven't listened to me yesterday, I'll just repeat anywhere in the middle of the video itself. I'll just be telling you guys for one second where the attendance link is. I'll show you the attendance link for two minutes. How to fill up the attendance, then that is your responsibility. By 30 minutes after the end of the class, we'll be closing. Like we will not be able to accept any more responses. If you are filling the attendance form after that, that is not getting going to get counted as your attendance so for those who don't know how the attendance is going to take in place the only option that you are having is go and watch the day one video okay without that you are not going to know how the attendance is going to uh, be taken up okay great so let's move on from right over there okay we have seen the first five rules the sixth rule is that you cannot use a reserved keyword as a variable name what do you mean by a reserved keyword guys a uh, reserved keyword is basically something that has an already has an already existing meaning in uh, python okay for example you cannot use print as a variable name in python print already has a special meaning in python itself okay now you will tell sir we don't know all the keywords that are there in python you don't need to know it as soon as the more than more that you will be practicing the more type of keywords you will be getting yourself familiarizing with okay so you will be having like keywords like for dev del is try for all these type of keywords will be there and if you are trying to use them as a variable name they will get highlighted okay because these have a special value or special meaning in python itself so you cannot use a reserved keyword as a variable name now like i said all these six are rules okay 
if you are breaking this rules then you will get an error your code wouldn't work properly okay you your code wouldn't work properly you would get an error right over there okay so right over here as you are able to see uh, these are some of the allowed variable names so x y my python my underscore python underscore my underscore python so you can use underscores okay you can use underscores so you don't have to worry about it my python 7 these are all okay these are all uh like variable names that are there uh rana raz yes uh like i've done a lot of explanation right over here like i said i like to take things from scratch i don't uh, imagine that the students know anything so that anybody can attend these boot camps and learn about machine learning ai full stack anything that they want to learn i also find this very appalling that this is something very basic for me and i have to teach it every single day so I also don't like it, but that is how things need to go. We need to take up the weakest link in our community to make sure that the community remains the strongest in the entire country. Okay. So always focus upon the weakest of the links and your community will always be the strongest. That is like the thing. Okay. Of course I can just like, just leave everything out and just start with deployment of machine learning models and nobody would even get the like a wind of what I'm speaking. And I don't want that okay so please be uh, like i hope that you guys know all this that's great for you but if you know this then help your uh, teammates okay those people who are there in the live chat if they have any questions answer them instead of wasting your time and my time as well on speaking something that is definitely not required okay you could either keep up with your own business or you could put up a message helping students out in the community. Okay, so I know this, so I can help you out with this. Okay, this is something that I know. This is an additional thing that I know. Okay, you can also learn about this as well. Help people out. Okay, sometimes it's good to be selfish and sometimes it's just like a dick move to be selfish sometimes. So stop being a dick. Try to help people out. Okay okay so let's uh, get started with that so as you're able to see right over here these are some variable names that are not allowed okay for example starting with a number okay so, uh, having a variable name that starts off as a number itself so seven my python that is a particular invalid variable name having a hyphen anywhere inside the variable name itself that is something that is like not uh, that is breaking our rule so again this is not a valid variable name containing at a rate inside the variable name again special character we cannot have it so again not a very uh, like not a, a valid variable name having a space inside the variable name of course you cannot contain a space inside the variable name itself okay using a reserved keyword as you're able to see for is a reserved keyword in python and it is getting highlighted in purple for us so that is also something that we cannot use if we are running this particular lines of code you will be able to see that the code wouldn't be running and will get an error at the end saying syntax error now what do we mean by syntax so it is still running i don't know why but uh, what do we mean by syntax error okay what do we mean by syntax just like in normal english okay whenever you are learning english at any point of time um, you have a grammar right over there okay you have grammar you have grammatical mistakes as well that you make uh, so those grammatical mistakes that you make the same grammatical mistakes when you make it in programming sense okay programming has a set of rules as well okay just like in english you have a set of rules governing the uh, grammar of the language the similar way in every single programming language there's some set of rules that govern the grammar or govern the syntax of it is called a syntax in programming language of the entire language of the entire programming language itself okay so that is this uh, thing okay so right over here you are not following those syntax rules so it is giving you an error saying that you are having a syntax error invalid syntax right over here okay are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys great uh let's move on from right over here guys uh let's look at uh some of the uh like whatever we studying previously rules and conventions okay now we have looked at some of the rules that are associated with it now we'll be looking at some of the conventions that are there okay 
so looking at these conventions you will be able to realize what is the difference between conventions and rules okay now these conventions are made into such a way so there's a concept within programmers okay that is very famous i don't know if you guys know about it but when you will be uh, like entering into an industry itself for example when i started working with reliance that was my first job as a data analyst so they told me one thing okay that there's an unsaid rule in the programming community if i am looking at your code and anybody else is code inside the entire industry okay i shouldn't be able to differentiate i shouldn't be able to tell that these two codes have been written by two separate people it should feel as if the same person has written both the set of codes okay that is a particular like convention that is there in the industry in the programming industry itself okay that no matter who is writing the code there should be a set of conventions that they are following so that when i look at two sets of code it should feel as if the same person has written it and one of and two of those conventions that are there i'm sharing those with you if you are not following these conventions if you're not following these conventions your code will work absolutely fine there will be no issues with that but any good programmer after reading your code will be able to tell that he's a noob okay that you are a noob you don't know about python programming because you are not following these conventions is the exact same as just eating out of a bowl directly with your mouth people will think that you are not a human being you are an animal the same thing goes on right over here as well if you're not following these conventions people will think that you are not a good python programmer you are just a noob right over there okay so let us see these two uh, like conventions that are there try to keep the name of the variables descriptive but short okay so what for example let us say that you want to take up the height of a tree as a variable name okay you are calculating you are writing a particular code in which you have to take up the height of a tree so what should be the variable name that you should use should it be height of a tree okay as the appropriate variable name or for example right over here height underscore of underscore the underscore tree now this is a very descriptive uh like variable name but it is not short okay this is a very descriptive variable name but this is not short okay you cannot use something like x or h x and h is short although x and h is short it is not descriptive enough it is not able to tell us what it is measuring so the app, uh, appropriate variable name would be height or height underscore tree these are the two appropriate variable names that you can use okay height underscore tree or just height okay so you want the variable names to be short but descriptive the next particular thing that is there is the pythonic way of naming the variables is to use all lower case letters and underscores to separate the words okay that is the pythonic way of naming variable guys okay you have to use all lower case letters okay all lower case letters no upper case characters anywhere inside the variable name and separate the words inside the variable name with underscores for example height underscore of of underscore the underscore tree everything is in lower case letters and separated by underscores this is called as snake case okay this is called as snake case so people will be asking you in interviews that uh, which type of casing should you utilize for writing python uh, variable names so you should be prompt with the answer that is snake case itself okay this is all that something that you should realize uh, very soon are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand that please do let me know guys this is called as snake case okay this is what you are going to use snake case means everything is in lower case characters right over here separated by underscores so that is called as a snake case guys so uh, the pythonic way of naming a variable all lowercase characters separated by underscores that is the pythonic way of naming the variable so you're having my underscore height my underscore lat my underscore long okay so that is one of the things the second non pythonic way of naming the variables okay although this will work okay although all in capital my long or uh, this is the camel case so my lat right over here all this will work you will not get any kind of errors right over here if i am running this particular line of code as you are able to see i'm not getting any kind of error it is running perfectly but this is not the pythonic way of naming a variable okay anybody who is looking at your code will just understand that you are a noob okay you don't know how to name a simple python variable as well okay
okay the next particular thing that we need to work upon is overwriting the variable okay the spelling is over w r i t i n g so for those i know 90 percent of you will be asking sir what is the spelling so i am highlighting the spelling right over here so that you are able to see okay what is overwriting the variable right over here first of all i had written rent is equals to 1700 later on i have written rent is equals to 2000 okay so the earlier value that was there inside of rent okay earlier on we are having a box called as rent it is a value of 1700 inside of it once we are replacing it with 2000 the 1700 gets lost in the memory okay we are never able to get that 1700 back at any point of time this is called as overwriting the variable see whatever topics that i'm teaching to you guys are from the perspective of interviews itself these are some interview questions that are usually asked in python when it comes to jobs and internships so that is the reason why i've included this as well it's not just about learning python but to get yourself ready for interviews as well okay so this concept is called as overwriting the variable it's very simple whenever a new value is assigned to a variable the old one is forgotten okay whenever the new value is assigned to a variable the old one is forgotten and that is called as overwriting the variable okay for those who are still at the case itself was snake okay as in like a python cobra or something like that snake case okay as simple as that guys okay so this is called as overwriting the variable now one more thing that uh, you guys need to understand is about uh, okay uh is there some problem with the video somebody is asking the video is not uh proper so how do we get the hard copy by courier or by pdf candidate with a uh, name how do we get the certificate so you will get the certificate on the email id that you had used to register for this particular boot camp that will be matched with your attendance and on and your project submission and on the basis of that you will get the certificates on your email id okay okay great so right over here as you're able to see the rent is 1700 i've increased the rent to 2000 so i've overwritten the like rent as 2000 itself then i'm writing rent is equal to rent plus 700 so i'm increasing the rent by 700 rupees so when i'm printing rent out right over here i will get 2700 as simple as that there's not a lot to like uh, talk about right over here so what we are going to do right now is we can even write this out as rent plus is equals to 700. This is the exact same line as this. Both of them have the exact same meaning. So why does we not have camel case? Uh, the exact same question I can also ask you. Okay. Uh, why yo yo for example if you are a male why are you male? Like that's the same question like it is something that has been defined by the programming society in general for python for example if you are moving to some other uh like uh programming for example in java you will be having camel casing and c plus plus you'll be having something else so that is the point like every community has come together and decided this okay if you are trying to find the logic behind everything i will suggest that you should take up chemistry then your life will be fucked up because like chemistry has a like just illogical logics all over it okay when i'm saying something this is something that you have to understand okay so it is something that has been taken up from the perspective of the entire programming community in general okay okay so right over here as you are able to see uh we are having this particular line rent is equal to rent plus 700 so we are incrementing the value of rent by 700 rupees we can do the exact same thing without writing all this by just writing okay sorry control z by just writing rent plus is equals to 700 okay rent plus is equals to 700 so that is the point are you guys able to understand this please do let me know we can replace this exact same line by writing it as rent plus is equals to 700 now i've commented this line out by placing a hash in front of it okay by placing a hash in front of this particular line of code okay you will be able to comment that particular line out what do i mean by comment now that line is no longer a code that is a normal english that is present right over there that python will ignore this entire line python will just ignore python won't execute this 
this particular line of code this is a comment this is for the programmer's perspective itself if you want to comment something for your own good for referencing at a later point of time you just have to place a hash in front of that line and that line is now commented okay python won't run this particular line so if i'm running this particular line of code again again i will be getting the answer as 2700 okay again i will be getting the answer as 2700 right over here okay so we are replacing this line by plus is equals to we can use other assignment operators as well for example we can have rent is equal to rent minus 700 we can write it as rent minus is equals to 700 that will give us like 2000 minus 700 that is 1300 right over here we can replace it as rent is equal to rent multiplied by 700 we can do it by multiplied equal to 700 so that will give us 2000 multiplied by 700 we can do it as rent is equal to rent divided by 700 okay we can put it up as rent divided by equal to 700 that is also something that we can do so whatever operator that you want to use you can use it right over here guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys Okay, one more thing guys related to the uh, attendance at any point of time I can show you guys the attendance but if you are leaving the class after that okay there might be a case where I'm showing two attendance on the same day you have to fill both the attendance to get the uh, attendance for that particular day itself so for every single day the method will be totally different you don't know how many attendance how many links what are the different stuff that I will do with it. So if you are, if you feel that I've shown you the attendance and you leave the class, it might be the case that I will show another attendance at the end of the bootcamp as well. And only those students who have the attendance for both the forms will be able to get the certificates. So please, whenever I show the attendance, do not leave the class. Okay. Otherwise don't come complaining back to me that, sir, I failed the attendance. You showed another attendance and after that, like, what can I do? But this is something that I've done in the previous bootcamp. So I can do it at this bootcamp as well. Okay, sir, is your team sending WhatsApp messages uh, of your uh, like boot camps and telling to forward it on five groups? Uh, yes, yes. Like I've already said, DevTown is a non-profit organization. We do not charge anything for these boot camps. We do not charge anything for conducting these boot camps, not for the certificates, not for the teaching, nothing like that. Everything right over here is free because DevTown is a non-profit organization. So we cannot invest our own. So I work as a software engineer as well. So after that, I come back home and then I take up these classes in the evening. So I cannot invest my money into this because like that's the case because Depton is a non-profit. There's no profit involved right over here. That is the reason why we ask you guys to promote it within your own college, with, it, with your own friends, so that more and more students will be able to join us and we'll be keep on like conducting these boot camps for free, giving you guys more number of certificates. That is the reason why somebody must have contacted you. But we are affiliated with only Microsoft and Google and no other company. Okay, so DevTown, Microsoft and Google, no other company will be calling you except that if somebody is calling you, that is just a fraud message. Okay. Okay, so let's continue from right over there, guys. Okay, uh, the next particular thing that we need to focus upon is the data types. Okay, up till here, we have seen a lot of different kinds of data. For example, right over here, we saw numbers, 2000, 1700, all these kind of numbers that are there. We also saw a number that is quite not an integer. Okay, this is a decimal number. This is not an integer number right over here. 2.85714. This is not an integer. Okay. We have also seen some other type of data as well. For example, right over here, something in these quotation marks. Okay, this is not an integer. This is not a decimal number. This is just text okay so all these different kinds of data that are there in python and we have categorized this data into different data types the four main data types that we are going to study about is integer floats boolean as well as strings so let us get started with learning about our very first uh, variable sorry very first data type that is our integers and floats okay so far the number that we have dealt with are mostly whole numbers or integers but you must have noticed that there are also some other type of numbers that exist okay for example right over here when you divide an integer by an integer as you are able to see right over here 3 divided by 2 both of them are integers 
integers. If I am dividing it right over here, we get an answer that isn't quite an integer. It is a decimal value that is 1.5. Now this 1.5 is what we call as float or floating point number. We don't call it as a decimal number in Python. The technical term for this particular data type is uh, float or floating point number. Okay. So are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. Is Ashwarya from Devtown? Yes, Pranjal, she is from Devtown. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know, guys. Why not double? Why not my name is uh, Shora Sina and why not like uh, Priyanshu Sina? Okay, that's just the name that has been given to it. Getting into some like uh, very non logical questions. Okay, there are a lot of questions that you can ask at least maintain a sense of IQ that you guys should be having in colleges. Okay, so ask me questions that are really like when I feel hey, watch these questions, I should be like, are hey, so smart students of mine are there. When I watch these questions, why, why, why float? Why not double? Why not decimal? Hey, what do you feel man? That is just the definition. Okay. You guys don't take up uh, chemistry at any point of time. You will be asking questions like why ferrous? Why not iron? Why are we not calling it iron? Why are we calling it as ferrous? <laughs> Ask better questions. Okay. So right over here, as you are able to see, uh, we are going to look at some decimal point values as well. Okay. Numbers uh, with a decimal point such as 3.14 are called as floating point numbers. The full form of float is floating point numbers itself. Okay. Uh, note that even though the value 42 is an integer, okay, as you are able to see right over here, the value 42 is an integer, the value 42.0 will be a floating point number. Okay, the value 42 is a integer, but the value 42.0 will be a floating point number guys. Okay, please remember this. Please remember this right over here. Okay, uh, so right now what we are going to see is some examples. Just like we are having the print function by then that is help we use to print something out to our screen. We are also having a type function in Python that basically tells you the data type of the object that you are looking at. Okay. So type of the object A. So A is a variable that we have conduct, uh, we have created with a value of three inside of it. Okay. Similarly, B is also a variable. Okay. That has 2.5 as a value inside of it. We are going to use the type function that basically points out to the data type of the object. So let us run this. The type of A is integer that is int int and type of B is basically float that is a floating point number. Are you guys able to understand uh, this? Please do let me know guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. Great. So move on from right over here. Okay. The next particular thing is how can we convert an integer to a float and a float to an integer? These are the two things that we need to look at. Okay. We need to look at how can we convert an integer to a float and a float to an int. Okay. Uh, so right over here, we are having three. Okay. If you want to convert an integer, so three is an integer. Okay. If you want to convert this into float, what we have to do is we just have to write float in front of it and then write three. Okay. So that will convert this into and a float and the answer that you'll be getting would be 3.0 so to convert an integer to a float okay to convert any kind of integer to a float it will just add 0 0.0 at the end that's it okay to convert an integer to a float it will just add 0, 0.0 at the end similar to it right over here if we try to convert an uh, float to an integer Okay, if we try to convert a float to an integer, it will just remove everything that is present after the decimal point. It is not rounding it off. Okay, it is truncating it. Okay, it is not rounding it off. It is truncating it. It will just remove everything after the decimal point. So it does not matter whether it is 28.1, 28.4, 28.10, 28.9 whatever be the case the answer will always be 28 the answer would always be 28 are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys 
okay so let us run this particular two lines of code and let us see what their answers are so let me run this particular lines of code and as you are able to see 3 as an integer got converted to a float that is 3.0 and 28.9 as an uh, float got converted to 28 like i said there is no fucking rounding off right over here okay it is truncating it it will just remove everything that is present after the decimal point it is not rounding it off okay we are just converting a float to an integer that's it okay do not confuse both the topics there is no relationship between them okay next particular thing that we need to understand is this fact okay it's a very important fact that is currently being asked in like a lot of different interviews related to python field itself uh most of the people who haven't attended any of our previous boot camps and this is your first boot camp and you know python okay uh i can guarantee you that you don't know this particular point because this isn't something that will be taught to you in any course or something like that i also didn't learn it from a course or something i read a lot of books related to python and whatever programming language that i'm studying whatever technology that i'm learning right now so i read a lot of books and from those books i came to know about this particular point and it was also asked to a lot of different students in the interviews as well so this is a very important point if you're not able to understand it it's totally fine okay you don't need to understand it you just need to know the answer okay in an interview do you understand it or not nobody fucking cares if you are able to say the answers with the confidence that you are having it's totally fine so if you are not able to understand it do not get more demotivated or something like that try to just remember the point okay just remember the point the point is very uh, simple okay floats are an approximation to the number they represent okay that is the point okay? this is something that you need to just engrave it inside your head floats are an approximation to the number they represent okay can are you guys able to understand the, like remember this particular line floats is an approximation to the number they represent are you guys able to remember this particular line in your head please do let me know floats are an approximation to the number they represent now once you have put this particular line engraved it into your head itself into your brain itself then we can focus upon learning okay what this particular thing means okay floats are an approximation to the number they represent if you are still not able to understand the point you can look at this particular text on the screen okay floats are an approximation to the number they represent as simple as that okay now let's come to the point itself floats can represent a very large range of numbers okay so after a decimal point there are up to 32 decimal points that you can write the number itself so there's a lot of number that floats can be represented as okay so let us try to understand it what basically happens first let's see what happens right over here so for example if i'm writing a particular float as if 0.23 okay this is a float that i'm creating a is equals to 0.23 inside of the memory inside of the memory of python this will be stored as a little bit greater than a very small amount greater than 0.23 it is not exactly 0.23 it will be stored in the memory as 0 0.23 0000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
I am telling you again and again. Right now, I am showing you the attendance. The attendance will be on my screen for four seconds. Okay, you will have to like note down the time at which I have shown you the attendance. Come back at a later point of time to check the attendance link. Scan the QR code up and get your attendance. Okay, please do not fill up the attendance form right now. After the class is over, you will have thirty minutes to fill up the attendance form. Okay. I'm giving you guys a lot of time. Thirty minutes is more than sufficient to fill up the uh, form itself. Okay, so right now I'm showing you the attendance uh, QR code for today. This is the QR code for today, guys. It will be on my screen for the next four seconds. One, two, three, and four. So the attendance uh, QR is gone from my screen. Right now we'll again come back to studying. Okay, so uh, let's try to understand this particular fact, guys. Uh, why is this opening up again and again? Okay, so I have to close that up. Okay, so right now that we have seen that okay, zero point two three is represented in the memory as zero point two three zero 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 one two three or something like that. Okay, so why is this happening, guys? First of all, before uh, like understanding why, we first need to confirm that okay, is th this happening or not? Because you cannot trust me. Okay, I I could just say something like bullshitty, and you will be like, "Acha, we need to trust this guy." How will you trust me? Okay, I need to prove that this is something that is happening. So let us try to understand. Okay, let us see a proof for this. Okay, let us go back right over here. What I've done right now is I have added zero point two three thirty times. I can count the number of zero point two threes right over here. Okay. um you can count the number of 0.23s right over here okay uh, the uh, it is exactly 30 so what do you think 0.23 added 30 times what should be the uh, answer guys 0.23 added 30 times what should be the answer can you guys let me know can you guys let me know guys what should be the answer if 0.23 added 30 times Guys, please do not be an idiot. This is a YouTube video. Those who are asking like for attendance, there are just two possibilities: either you are so fucking dumb that you don't understand anything, or you were not listening to me. Okay, so you choose. If we are writing about attendance in the live chat, there are just two possibilities: you are not listening to me in that particular scenario. You shouldn't be getting the attendance link, or you are just too idiot. If you are just too idiot, then watch the video from the start once again. Okay. So let's continue from right over here. Six point nine, exactly for me as well. Six point nine should be the case. Okay, zero point two three added thirty times is six point nine. So what I've done right over here is I'm checking. So using this particular operation, okay, it basically checks whether the left hand side, whether the LHS is equal to the RHS or not. Okay, the LHS is equal to the RHS or not. If it is equal, it will give true as the answer. If it is not equal, it will give false as the answer. Okay, so According to us, yes, zero point two three added thirty times. That is six point nine. On the right hand side, we are having six point nine. According to us, the answer should be true. According to us, the answer should be true. Okay. So if you are running this particular line, okay, if you are running this particular line of code, we are getting false as the answer. As you are able to see, uh, as you are able to see, you are getting false as the answer itself. Okay. So uh, why is that the case? This is the case because zero point two three added thirty times is not exactly six point nine, but actually it is six point nine zero 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 zero, and at the last we are having six right over here. Okay, are you guys able to see this? Please do let me know. Are you guys able to see this? Please do let me know, guys. So why equal sign two times? That basically checks whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not. Having just a normal equal to sign, that is an assignment operator. It assigns the value on the right hand side to the variable that is there on the left hand side. Okay, here you want to check whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side or not. For that, you are having equal to equal to symbol. Okay, so why is this happening? Okay, I added zero point two three thirty times. The answer should be six point nine. Why is this six getting added at the very end? Why is this coming at the very end? we need to understand that okay we need to understand that and that is because of this particular thing in the memory python does not store 0.23 at 0.23 it stores it like this and once you are adding this particular number okay 0.23000000123 times this 1 to 3 gets added up as well 1 to 3 plus 1 to 3 plus 1 to 3 30 times and that basically gives you a bigger number that basically gives you 6.9 
nine zero 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 and this all gets added up to give you six at the very end okay this also gets added up to give you six at the very end okay that is the reason why you're getting a six right over here are you guys able to understand why we are able to get six right over here guys because for python floats are an approximation to the number they represent they are not the exact number itself are you guys able to understand this yes we'll be discussing upon why do python why does python does this okay now uh, up till now if you are able to understand okay why where this six comes from where this one two three comes from now we'll try to understand why python does this okay why is python treating floats as an approximation to the number they represent okay the why this happens the reason is extremely simple there's something called as precision okay for those who have studied mathematics in that 11 12th standard they should be familiar with the term precision okay up till how many decimal places are you able to give me the answer up to okay that is called as precision okay the term precision basically means up till how many decimal places can you give me the perfect answer now for example if i'm having two particular uh, variables let's say that 0.23 okay two particular values 0.23 multiplied by 0.69 okay that is my particular calculation that we are having right over here 0.23 multiplied by 0.69 right over here now whatever is the calculation let me just calculate it because i don't uh, want to do it right now so let me open up calculator let's take up 23 multiplied by 69 uh, enter shit i will just do it right over here itself uh 27 18 18 22 then you are having 6 plus 18 a 1 6 plus 6 12 13 uh x 7 8 one so that is 0 0.1587 okay the final answer that comes to you is 0 0.1587 okay now the problem with this is if you didn't have something that is called as precision then as you are using just two decimal points right over here two deci okay similarly right over here as well it is two deci so python will only be able to give the answer up to two decimal points so the answer for this particular equation would have been just 0 0.15 okay nothing more nothing less because you are not able to maintain the precision right over here you are only able to do calculations that are up till two decimal points nothing more or nothing less to be able to fight with this particular problem python started saving its numbers a little bit greater than what they are actually are it's like a very minute difference okay let's 0 0.23 multiplied by 0 0.69000000000123 so even though these two multiplications are there okay it is a very small change in the number itself in the final number it will be a very small change the answer but you will be able to get 0 0.1587000000000000 something something okay so you are able to get you are able to maintain the number of decimal points up till which you are able to provide an answer to okay you are able to get uh a particular number okay up till the number of decimal points that you want okay that is the major point right over here are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this see the point is very simple okay what you want is that uh, you want to have number of decimal points okay you want to maintain the number of decimal points the precision of your answers itself you want to have as many number of decimal points that you can go up till okay, and that is the reason why they increase the number very slightly very slightly so that they are able to provide you an answer up till that many number of decimal points itself okay are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. See the classes are usually of one to one and a half hours. Okay. So the class will be going on. You will have to wait. Great. So that was the point that I was trying to make to you guys. In uh, Python. Okay. Floats are 
an approximation to the number they represent okay the next particular data type that we are going to learn is about bool or the boolean data type okay so bool is the short form for boolean uh, it is one of the most commonly used data type in uh, python bool is a short form for boolean which can have a value of either true or false most of you must have studied about boolean values in your class 11th and 12th okay these were your ones and zeros in your physics okay the and gate or gate nor gate xor gate all these gates that you studied in python during your 11th and 12th standard uh, that in that you are having ones and zeros okay that was your boolean values itself here in python we just referred one as true and zero as false okay so we already have some understanding about the boolean data type as well okay to so create a boolean data type it's extremely simple okay python awesome the documentation bad python awesome is equals to true please uh, try to remember that the t and f of true and false should be positive okay the t and f of true and false should be positive guys please do remember that okay the next particular thing that we need to look at is comparison operators okay comparison operators now what is comparison operators comparison operators compare different values to give you a boolean result okay for example right over here we are comparing is 3 greater than 1 okay is 3 greater than 1 yes 3 is greater than 1 so it will return this comparison operator of greater than will return to us true that yes true that means 3 is greater than 1 similar to that we are having greater than equal to we are having less than equal to we are having equal to equal to we are having less than we are having not equal to okay so there are various different comparison operators that are there for example right over here is 3 not equal to 1 we are basically checking if the lhs is not equal to rhs yes 3 is not equal to 1 so if i am running this it will give me the answer as true if i am checking whether the lhs is equal to the rhs or not is 3 equal to 1 or not so if we are trying to check that of course 3 is not equal to 1 we are getting false as our answer are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys are you guys able to uh, understand this please do let me know guys Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know, guys. Great. So next particular thing is using. So we have learned about log. Uh, sorry, we are going to have comparison operators. So these are called as comparison operators, where we are comparing two values to give you a Boolean result. The next particular thing is called as logical operators. Your AND OR, these all gates, AND OR, NOT gates that you have studied in uh, physics. These are called as logical operators, guys. I don't think so. I need to revise what is an AND gate or an OR gate or an OR NOT gate. I hope that you guys remember that from your physics classes itself. This is something that everybody attending this bootcamp should be knowing. I don't think so. That is something that we need to repeat. So when you are having an AND gate right over here, so you are having rent is equals to 1200. So let us copy this. Okay. We'll replace the term rent with its value. Okay. So we are having 1200 greater than 1000. Yes. 1200 is greater than 1000. So let us keep this as true. Okay. T R U E true. Okay. The second thing is 1200 is less than 2000. Is 1200 less than 2000? Yes. So that will also be true. So these were comparison operators. Now we have entered into the field of logical operators, guys. AND gate is there on both the sides you are having true so the answer will be true as well so we will be having is affordable is t r u e true right over here okay so let us uh, confirm that let us run our code once again so right over here let's run this and as you are able to see we are getting true as the answer here as well now the same thing if i'm putting it in a not uh, gate okay i can just put this entire thing in a not gate right over here okay so we know that in, in, in the thing that is on the inside has the value of true so what is not true not true is false using the not gate we have converted it true to false so if i'm running this again you will be getting false as the answer as simple as that okay the attendance you have to submit it at the end of today's class okay after that you'll be having 30 minutes once the class is over okay to fill up the attendance form if you are filling it before that again you will not be able to get the attendance if you are filling it after the those 30 minutes have gone you will not be able to get the attendance okay great 
so uh, let's continue from right over there okay so now that we have understood about our boolean data types as well okay we need to understand about string data type now python has another data type in its toolkit called as strings okay why strings because uh, just like you are having a string that is a thread of pearls okay a string of pearls strings is basically a, like a thread of characters that you are able to attach together so right over here as you are able to see we are having print shape ai so you can print a uh, text okay, a string using both double quotations as well as single quotation marks okay you can use both of them double quotations or single quotations to create a uh, string okay it's as simple as that okay you don't have to take up any preference or something like that you can use both of them to create a uh, string okay the next particular thing is that uh, see if you have filled it right now there's no issues i'm just telling you guys from tomorrow keep this in mind okay if today you have filled up do not worry about it i can understand this is your first boot camp there will be a lot of mistakes that you'll be making but from tomorrow onwards keep in mind that do not fill up the attendance in the class fill the attendance after the class you will be having 30 minutes okay whenever the class is ending after that you have 30 minutes to fill the attendance form up okay okay so right over here a string can contain spaces a string can contain special characters a string can contain numbers a string can contain uh, capital letters small letters a string can contain anything that it wants okay you don't have to worry about it okay so if i'm running this particular line of code right over here you are able to see that it is working absolutely fine we don't have any problems with this okay are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys but today's attendance needs to be filled within 30 minutes of the class after that i won't be taking in any attendance even if you're filling the form up you are not going to get the certificates okay please remember that today after the end of today's class you have 30 minutes to fill the attendance up okay if you are taking the uh, checking the data type of moto as you are able to see right over here you will be able to see that we are getting str okay we are able to get str that is the short form for strings okay that is the short form for strings right over here now uh, so we'll wait uh, up till here from this particular point of time we'll continue it from tomorrow onwards itself so yeah we'll meet tomorrow once again guys and we'll continue it from right over there okay tomorrow i think so there might be no classes tomorrow okay there might be no class tomorrow we'll be having the class day after tomorrow so i'm telling to you guys uh, once again right over here okay so we might not have a class tomorrow we'll be having the class day after tomorrow so day after tomorrow i hope to see you guys live with us on the class itself okay so thank you so much guys and we'll meet tomorrow thank you so much guys thank you thank you thank you